Bring back the man in you, not because you need to, but because you will want to. Improve your weight room and bedroom performance with the all new Vasoflux for Men Natural Dietary Supplement. This unique blend of barks, roots, herbs, and vitamins is nature's way of keeping you in the game. And all for under $10. You can order yours today. Visit U Fountain Laboratory at ufountainlab.com or call 1 800 853 7856 today. Lawrence Moten, one of the great scorers that's ever played at Syracuse. Congratulations, Lawrence. Well deserved. Today's feature may be the best unknown past talent in stunted growth history that holds a scoring record at one of the premier schools in the country for basketball and for one of the top conferences, the Big East, that stood for 25 years. 2334 a number synonymous to a player that at one point seemed to have the right package to take his talents further than they eventually went, but is respected and requested heavily by not only the community, but by many that watched college basketball in one of its golden eras, the early to mid 90s. Today, we'll talk about some of the great things he did in college that made him an NBA draft pick, more about the record he held that should be named after him, which exemplifies what it means to be a fully committed college basketball student athlete, and what three things may have kept him from having the same success he had in college in the NBA. Lawrence Edward Moten, born March 25th, 1972. Salute to everyone that requested this guy. Thank you for watching. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get him. Lawrence Moten is a 6'5 shooting guard from Washington, D.C. that wasn't heavily recruited across the country, but around the D.C., Virginia area, his talents didn't go unnoticed, especially by schools like Georgetown and Syracuse, who both wanted his services. He would choose Syracuse University along with five other freshmen and in his own words was considered the fifth best. Jim Beheim himself when John Thompson joked with him about stealing another DC product from the Hoyas wasn't sure what Moten would turn out to be and responded to Thompson with a simple quote, we'll see. Whatever reassurance Beheim needed didn't take long because after just two games as an Orangeman due to injury to Adrian Autry, he was in the starting lineup. He immediately got on the phone in excitement to tell his mother the great news, but all she could say was just don't give it back. Never give it back. And that's all a mother needs to say sometimes. Moten not only kept that starting spot, but elevated himself among the top names in the history of the school and in the Big East Conference. 30 years later, there's still hoop lovers that want to hear his story. One of triumph and stunted growth. Stunt number one, translation. In my opinion, one of the more important reasons Lawrence Moten didn't see the same success in the NBA as he did in college is because his game didn't translate well to the style of the NBA. It happens to many hoopers and is something that needs to be understood when trying to make hooping a career path and when analyzing a person's game as a fan or a scout and franchise when considering investing in a player. One of the beautiful things about basketball is that although the structure of the game and its parameters for the most part stay the same, it can be equally different down to the smallest aspects. You may be a good player on an Eastern Conference team and move west and not see the same success. You can also be on another team in the same conference and because of the different style of play may have the same results. The same goes for the different levels in the sport. Not because you're a star in high school mean that's what you will be in college and vice versa. And not because you lead the program and or conference mean your game will be just as suited in the NBA or overseas. Lawrence entered the program as a slender 6'5 scorer that showed potential, huge heart, and great work ethic. As mentioned earlier, just after a few games in college, he was named a starter at his position and took off. He was second on the team in scoring and third in rebounds at 18.2 and six boards, helping win a Big East championship. 
he was named a conference freshman of the year and third team all conference. As a sophomore, he was the clear-cut leader on the team and expected to be one of the best players in the country, although his numbers would take a small hit and the team missed the NCAA tournament due to violations. He was named first team all-conference, a placement he'd see three times in his four years. As a junior, his team bounced back and made it to the Sweet 16 with Moten averaging 21.5 points a game, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals. His game was crafty and as smooth as they come, with the attitude of a star player to match. By the end of his senior season, where he led the team once again at 19.6 points a game, he was considered a clear NBA draft pick, potentially in the first round. He was taken by the Vancouver Grizzlies in the second round, 36 overall, and immediately began to show that his more slower style, mixed with low athleticism and size that was great in college, was now below ideal for where the game was headed. In his rookie season, I think the Grizzlies had the space for him to grow and be successful, but because of his play style and system he came from that was more of a slower pace, he couldn't get the same shots off against bigger, faster, stronger, more athletic guards of the 90s. He averaged 6.6 .6 points a game in 13 minutes a game as a rookie and almost the same in his second season with more playing time. Stunt number two, shooting guard bag. Another reason his growth was stunted was because at the shooting guard position, it's hard to have success when you're expected to be the best shooter on the floor, if nothing else, and in areas that matter, you aren't. As a three-point shooter, Moten has always been just or below average, dating back to his Syracuse days. He was a great scorer, don't get me wrong. But when you're the face of a program and at the college level, you can be a good scorer and have that mask some of the scoring deficiencies you have. From the free throw line, he had the same issue. Going from a below average foul line shooter in college to below that average in the NBA. For a shooting guard that isn't one that plays above the rim or athletic enough to get past NBA level shooting guards and doesn't capitalize from the free throw line, it's hard to score and create opportunities for yourself. Another aspect that's expected from your shooting guards is an ability to create your own shot or one for a teammate. For Lawrence in college, scoring was the name of the game evident by the record he held for 25 years until broken this year by Marcus Howard for Big East scoring. But setting up teammates and bringing production to the team in other areas has always eluded the DC great. He averaged two assists a game in college and one in the NBA. As you can see, it must have been difficult for Moten to find his way onto the floor and get opportunities he needed, and a lot of it had to do with those things. As a second round pick, things aren't always assured for you, and after just his second season, the Grizzlies traded the then 24-year-old to the Washington Wizards. Stunt number three, wrong error. The third and final stunt that's totally my opinion, and I apologize ahead of time if you think I'm crazy, but it's just the way I view the game and my understanding that your style of play can either be futuristic or can be a throwback to another era. You hear it sometimes, people will say of a player, man, he has that old school game, or wow, this guy is a generational talent. What they mean is essentially that old school player would have been great in the old days. Not saying he isn't having a good career, but that his game would also be great back then. Of the generational talent, they're saying that this guy does things we've never seen at his position and leads his era into the future. Michael Jordan was that because his game was all too futuristic in those days. Players just wasn't doing what he came in doing. Allen Iverson, with the crossover, ushered in the flashy ball handling era. LeBron James and his hybrid style of size, speed, and athleticism. Kevin Durant with his size mixed with shooting ability and low post game. Or Steph Curry opening our eyes to the three-point shot from anywhere on the floor. I think Lawrence Moten would have been the truth in the 70s or 80s NBA era basketball. 
but in the 90s, things were different and his success took a halt upon entering the league. All in all, Lawrence Moten was a great college basketball player and a legend in his area and at Syracuse for the things he did there. After eight games with the Wizards, he played all over the world and is now a coach, teacher, and mentor for the youth in the area. He's still Syracuse's all-time leading scorer and had his jersey retired by the program. An outstanding person that's highly respected by myself and anyone familiar with his story, but for the reasons above, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect to him, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out. Also, if you have some time, I'm inviting you to check out the new website. Many have been asking for a cash app or how they can support the channel. Honestly, you watching the video and getting to this point of it is more than enough. But if you want to go the extra mile and get some pretty cool gear at the same time, new winter hoodies have just been released. It's a part of a project I'm working on, all original designs. For now, there's the gold tips along with the red and black. A play on words that exalt the game we all know and love. Stunnergrow3.com if you want to get some gear and show some support. It's your boy JC Stunnergrow. I'm really out this time. Chill.